Farina, right over there. She really is here all on her own. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Should I just give up? This is all meaningless. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. <laughs> I'm sorry. But what can I even do other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over? Uh, who, who's that? Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. <clears throat> <laughs> so, it is you, blonde traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were someone from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Farina, you were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are obvious. Uh, what do you mean, tear stains? Oh, oh <laughs> I remember. The show at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving. I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts. They even dare to tout their archon. I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellette and those people from the Marish Dose Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... Uh, of course not! Hey, there she is! The Hydro Archon's over there! Quick, after her! against the rules. I can't let them get their way. Ah! Farina just ran off! Quick, we have to catch up with her! Right? Hey, Farina! There's a good hiding spot over here! Quick, come to Paimon before the rest of them catch up to you! Uh, wh what? What is this place? Hurry, they're almost here! Fine, fine. I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. I totally thought they had caught me. Uh, no, I mean, 
I merely gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> You're right. Yep, that's a good girl. Uh, what's happening? The ground's shaking. Is it an earthquake? Yeah, a quake of this kind preceded the flooding in Poisson, didn't it? It can't be. It's happening again. Well, there's no need to worry too much about that. Nevelette's made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Yeah, I hope you're right. But the people of Poisson, they've already... It's true. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. I once had informants all over to Vat, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways too to hold back the sea, anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. We cannot make an enemy of the Divine. No matter what we do, the will of the Heavenly Principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. <laughs> Give up. <sighs> I do love the sound of that phrase. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. Indeed, I've thought about giving up so many times, especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. But just now, it all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. <sighs> well, that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden, but honestly, considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. Share my burden. <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. A witness. <sighs> yes, I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if to that is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... <sighs> I...
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our god. Ah, so this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Do not forget, however, that I am Fosalor, the god of justice the embodiment of justice itself. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. You... you would draw your blade against a god? I see. It seems like you have made up your mind. Paimon can't believe it. She... she just surrendered! Hmm. What the heck is going on? Did I just see an Archon surrender to a... a human? Wow. How oh, utterly humiliating. Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? It would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Looking for excuses again, huh? I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I, too, am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> But now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice. This time, I will protect you. Applaud and rejoice. One of the most outrageous and fantastical arcs known to the opera Epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words. This shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine. The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fosalor, will now begin! Woohoo! Oh, now we're making history! <sighs> Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Like, come on! Didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? All right, then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. Is that so? Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated opponent. Please allow me to ask, as a final question before the trial begins. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Now 
Flavia, the president of the Spina di Rasula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina? And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. That's right. That house was a magic box rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Erinias. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, you're welcome? Of course, this performance was only made possible with Father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. We had to select a location, construct the giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words... The earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? That's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. Oh? <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <sighs> it's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. Madam Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too! Hey, Charlotte! Oh, Lev Hyman see. Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? So she's already finished it, huh? Oh, wait. Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine! So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument! Let's quickly confirm
on the information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, all right? You defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duels you took part in at the Opera House. That's one for the history books, all right? You defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duels you took part in at the Opera House. That's one for the history books, all right? I didn't think that you'd wind up getting to the bottom of the case I'd been following all this time. I guess you could also see this as a happy coincidence. This is the first time Monsieur Nervilette had a difference of opinion with the Oratrice. Even the Hydro Archon can't figure it out. A Fatui Harbinger. She's an extraordinary person. Her instinct must mean something. The Fortress of Meripede was almost destroyed in a single day. That I didn't witness that scene personally will always be a source of professional regret, I think. According to Monsieur Nouvellet, both Child and that whale should have been in the Primordial Sea at that time. my awesome friend Navia. To be honest, that still gives me shivers. The words of someone as extraordinary as a witch can probably only be truly understood when something surreal happens to you. Execution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. <laughs> oh, come on, Nervy Lad. There's no need to repeat all the unimportant legal leads. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course. It is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true, but my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. Instead, I would like to charge you as a fraud who has never been the Archon in the first place. Wait, what was that? Lady Farina's a fraud? Hey... I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty, but... Did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? Charge accepted. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? Uh, <sighs> Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? There is no way that I, Fosalor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. Yeah, even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but, but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. See? 
<laughs> Even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor. Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. What do you say to that? Huh. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? You have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. Well, I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? You may be a member of another long-lived race, which would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. And second of all, even if that wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. A curse. I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. But in light of this claim, perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. You sensed it too, huh, Nervalet? Lady Farina is actually a human? Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, Everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. You tried to reference the Oratrice, but weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial.
You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. I never thought you'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules that all should respect and follow. <laughs> so, you neither knew why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? The real Hydro Archon? Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally, and it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... you can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> She's still throwing out all kinds of excuses. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an Archon? If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. <laughs> you don't need to go that far. <laughs> I... Uh... Aren't you the Hydro Archon? Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? Indemnidium! Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into Indemnidium! Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives! Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? <laughs> Isn't that a huge stretch? Yeah, no matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? It seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. I'm still the same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me? Please? You've got to believe me! If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Did she deceive all of us? And all of our parents and grandparents too? And then all of our ancestors? Ever since they were born? Enough! That's enough! Tell me then! If I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such, then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow, she came up with yet another argument. Uh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up.
doesn't sound right. Paimon doesn't think this clue can be used as compelling evidence to build our case. evidence to build our case. Hmm, that doesn't sound right. Paimon doesn't think this clue can be used as compelling evidence to build our case. on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions of you being the latter. Miss Navia, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. <sighs> Super sorry, Mr. Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak out of turn. Now... I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As everyone knows, a mass of blood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives, including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? If we are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon, touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Would she really dare to try? <sighs> Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. <sighs> well, of course he had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. That could only mean... What's going on? Is she really planning to... It's not what we thought she would... <sighs> Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... <clears throat> hey! <sighs> I... I'm fine! Look! Look at me, everyone! My hand is still here! I haven't been dissolved! Will you believe me now? I really am your Archon! I'm nothing like a normal human who would fall apart as soon as they touch this water! Really, was this not the most obvious thing in the world? Miss Siegewing? If you are present, Miss Siegewing, please come forward and attend to the defendant. Siegewing? Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few seconds. Hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. That should be enough. Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Seedwee. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that she was experiencing the abnormal 
adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. Thank you, Miss Siegwin. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Oh, wait. What did she just say? I didn't get dissolved. Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? Well, considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I... I can't believe... You... she says at this point will sway anyone the odds are just too stacked against her now with all the things that have been said Hyman doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end if there are no objections we will move on to the final judgment In my capacity as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is... guilty. We shall now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is...
No. The Oratrix also displays a guilty verdict. Isn't that correct, then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The Hydro Archon. Guilty. To be punished via the death sentence. Uh, the... the death sentence? That's actually one of the available sentences? I've always thought that it was just a myth. The one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court, and it's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice? What an unexpected twist. Farina's been sentenced to death by the Oratrix? We just wanted to use the trial to show her the seriousness of things, so she'd tell us the truth! How did things escalate this quickly? This outcome is indeed quite strange. According to Fontaine's current definitions of justice, as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences, is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been committed? Farina's sentence overly excessive. The very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. But now, the Oratrice seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. What does this mean? Um, excuse me, if I may interrupt. Is... the trial still going? Fremenay! Oh, you finally made it! I assume this means you've completed your mission? Mm-hmm. Any mission Father assigns to me will always be top priority. Is... that the first prophecy slate? to try and find the missing slate. I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. But has the trial already concluded? Then doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no, father will be disappointed in me. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Fremenet. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. Hmm. Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates. I would like you to come here and confirm their contents. I believe I've now made sense of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kind of talking about? In truth, Everything that you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. Okay, let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Paima will do her best to help you remember.
describes what you just said. It seems to show the previous Hydro Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. Does that mean that Fontanians are transformed Oceanids? Oh, Paimon wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. The second stone slate shows Celestia floating in the sky, and the Hydro Archon and her people worshipping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. This must be the point when the Hydro Archon and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydro Archon sin are the same thing? The third slate shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Huh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydro Archon crying on her throne, and so on. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when and not if. Quite right. Let's think about this some more. That doesn't sound quite right. Let's think about this some more. We know from the case of the serial disappearances of young women that Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial seawater. And the first stone slate tells us that long ago, the Hydro Archon used her power to turn Oceanids into humans. This might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. That doesn't sound quite right. Let's think about this some more. That doesn't sound quite right. Let's think about this some more. That doesn't sound quite right. Prophecy from the stone slates found its way into society, but not many people believed it at first. The fortress of Meropede was nearly flooded with primordial seawater, which we know can cause Fontanians to dissolve. It seems increasingly likely that the prophecy may come true. If we hadn't dealt with it in time, things could have gone very badly.
quite right. Let's think about this some more. That doesn't sound quite right. Let's think about this some more. Perhaps what is about to take place has all happened before. The true sin of the Hydra Archon that Nervilet mentioned, and the original sin cast down on the people of Fontaine by Celestia, as recorded on the stone slates. Not as simple as falling into the sea. When Navia fell into the sea, her consciousness was subjected to judgment. The stone slates show the people gathered around the Hydro Archon in the sea. Could that be alluding to the same thing? They'll dissolve into the primordial sea but won't cease to exist. Their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an Oceanid! The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm... Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness, and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripi was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what! The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truth should come to light! Share some truly shocking revelations. Let's hear them. Incredible. Linny, did you hear that? We're not real humans. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater, and how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial, all of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first 
Sister Slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. That could also explain why the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. It's to account for that ancient sin. The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us? And yet, after many hundreds of years, the Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the opera Epicles. <sighs> the twists of history are often the most unexpected of all. Yeah! Isn't the image here just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the hidden information recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. Hmm. Well? <laughs> Did you get it? I believe I should share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontanians and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon, as one of the seven, did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in, she eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanid's blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. So you... I... We were all Oceanids before we turned into human beings? That's way too much information for me. I think I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian. But it does answer a lot of our questions. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slate's respective positions are, in fact, correct.
A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than oceanids. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial sea. The nation of Fontaine is the nation of Hydro, as well as the nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. You may also recall Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. Yes, it refers to our present situation. I think I'm following now. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy, in truth, everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. So now, it seems, we're the ones making sure it comes true. What should we do? Huh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. <sighs> Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? Traveler, I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. About the fourth slate, you probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only be a small warning of something far worse to come. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. It was both dream and reality. If we're talking about a true culprit, that could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster.
So we've met it at last. I understand very well why it has chosen to make an appearance here. That whale does not belong to Tevat. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all the while. It has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea, using it to grow. That is the main cause for the rising sea levels. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Therefore, when it left the Primordial Sea, it decided to make its next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. Uh, we just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that Harbinger for buying us some time. Without him, the whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. That battle maniac! We've always known that he had a special connection with that whale, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this! Anyway, now that we know that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? It is too late. It had already absorbed too much of the Primordial Sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Even if the entirety of Tabat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Indeed, that's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end, no matter what. So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? The prophecy... Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence.
you. <laughs> Sorry. That shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, the sweet sound of bewilderment. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Fosalor? Why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving the Heavenly Principles. Deceiving the Heavenly Principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand? Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The me you see before you now is that divinity, and the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. All part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress. 
to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been 500 years. And all along, she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time. permitted you to come onto the stage. Now, I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. Alright, it is not my intent to reprimand you. There is no need to state your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. <laughs> oh, do not jest. Can you not feel it? I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility.
dear audience. The performance is experiencing a technical difficulty, but worry not. The guards shall resolve it soon. Breaking news! is still watching me, you know. Guards? Wait, where are the guards? Farina. Farina. Huh? Uh, who's that? Uh, who's calling me? Where are you? Be not nervous. Be not afraid. I am before you. Wait a moment. You're near me? How can this be? <laughs> Mirror you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Mirror me. W what do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? What prophecy? Oh, wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. 
the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? <laughs> yes, it will. And that is why I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. There is no escaping it. But doesn't that mean everyone will die? I'm a Fontanian just like them. Will I dissolve too? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Magical meetings exist in this world precisely to give people a chance to turn things around. It is the reason why you met me today. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales with all the people of Fontaine on one side and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> you truly are the perfect human. My ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role. That of the new Archon. Play as... a god? That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed? Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Remember, your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But I promise you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial. And everyone will be saved. A trial? Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it.
Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epicles. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Farina de Fontaine, your new Archon. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalise. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more... assertive. <gasps> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all-powerful? She's being so... Modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person, then? If you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Right. Near me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. <sighs> <laughs> oh, very good, my people. Only ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come onto the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? <laughs> Well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self, here in this opera house. You may consider my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Ah, so that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Her personality? It's quite shocking, to be honest. I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful! Our future may yet be bright after all. It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. Dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I 
they say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine! There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fosilor, stand within the Opera Epicles, so long as I stand before the Oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world! Lady Farina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. <sighs> Come now, was I not just at the Opera House in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nivellette. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? That's true. I fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought, Lady Archon. No need for fright. And do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now. Do your duties. The trial I await. It will come one day. Lady Farina, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right. Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Oh. You remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you, and to bring your words back to him. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. Oh, you're such a gentle and wise god. Thank you once again, 
behalf of my son. Lady Farina, here are the latest hydrological reports. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. I see. It's as I thought, then. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Have they found anything? I'm afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? Well, no wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods, after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. finally over. I haven't had a moment to breathe this whole time. But it's good to see that everything's getting on track. There are no longer any voices of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going, and everyone will be saved. All right, Farina, don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. Uh, there'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before. Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Understood. Keep monitoring. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. that there is nothing to worry about. I just... don't know when these days will end. I feel... 
feel utterly exhausted. Best to rest early today, too. Lady Farina, it's oh, it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Deoteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> and what a fine family yours is indeed. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer. A descendant of a line most ardent. <laughs> Surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Uh, um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are, are you crying? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> really now? I didn't even notice. <laughs> This must be the overflow of Hydro from my person. Well, can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? Uh, no wonder. No wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. across the centuries. But there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this act. It is the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You have to succeed. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden? <laughs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you call a witness. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, 
Then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... She's right. I could confide in her, couldn't I? But if things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. No, Farina. You shouldn't be selfish. <sighs> but what if... What if it's really all right? Farina, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows? Surely it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it long and hard. Nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. All you need to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that... Trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works. But that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me, yes. It would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the Oratrice. But really... 
Some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia, had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the oratories. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydra Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia, and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be. Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. <sighs> but... Oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the primordial sea, and the heavenly principles stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I, for my part, am the god of justice. And is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, Existence was Egeria's justice, and to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on, that should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last. I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty.
<sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. Dex Nuvelet, hereby declare, people of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. But since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must mete out punishment to that beast. I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry.
Traveler. Now that the Oratories can no longer function, I require an Executor to help me mete out justice. The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine. The beast that enacts the prophecy. Its name is the all-devouring Narwhal. Come with me, Traveler. The hour of execution has come. Thanks for helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but... Oh well. It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point. But they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. 
What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. That power... Who are you exactly? Uh, Hyman has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be Child's master. Skirk, right? It's just that he has the impression that she was the... less... talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring Narwhal without using power from beyond this world. So you may speak to me as equals. I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring Narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative. It eats too much. And I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. I... Uh, Miss Skirk? Uh, I think you might have missed the point. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. His name is Sir Tologi. Huh? I am unfamiliar with that name. Huh. So master is insufficiently famous. Hmm. How should I describe him, then? Have you heard of the name, The Fowl? The Fowl? Still nothing? Well, how about The Visionary? Vetterfulnir, then? Or Gold Rhindaughter? Ooh! That one we've heard! Rhindaughter's part of the Hexen Circle! She's Alberta's mom, right? Oh... So you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhindaughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? Hyman didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you that the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. What? Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the Heavenly Principles. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Then, will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away?
Hands initiate emergency rescue. Pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on! Let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. <laughs>
I do hope the Knights of Favonius are all working hard. Yes, take me with you. It's you. What brings you all here? Hey, we're just having a look around. I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here too. Uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. He represented the Knave in sending us a large amount of supplies and is helping with our work. Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. We just happen to share the same interests as Espina. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? That would be fine. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You're here too, Clarice? 
Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really came here to help me out. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision makers. And, well, I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel. About what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Uh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Oh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Chlorand, at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let her off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo, gather up! And smile! How did it go? Was it a good shot? Did Paimon look cute in it? Not bad. Your addition really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and freshness is the key. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clorand. Wow, you really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess, too. I asked Sijuin, who told Monsieur Nervillette, and he told you, right? That's a very complete information chain. In truth, all Monsieur Nervillette asked me was, when did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. <sighs> Stay safe now. And tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. You seem curious about the fortress. Of course. Ah, uh, that Risley. I still remember going down to the fortress to grill him for information on my father's case. Boy, did he take me for a ride. Without telling me anything, of course. But he did invite you to tea, didn't he? Two large pots of it, in fact. It was good tea, though. I have to agree. The tea there is very good. Ah. Speaking of that, would you like to have some today? I mean, you've got time, right? Well, I'd be partial to some shortbread. Wow, <laughs> it's like we've got a menu or something. <laughs> sure, sure. Mm, good. What flavor of biscuits would you like, Mr. Snezhevich? Me? Uh, I'm fine with anything. But I would prefer chocolate, should you have it. All right, leave it to me. I'll go over the newly arrived supplies with you later, Mr. Snezhevich. We should be able to finish the preparatory work today. That works great for me. Huh. Is it just me, or did you get a new lipstick? Oh, uh, I did. It was a gift from Sijuin. Want to give it a try? I think the color would suit you, too.
huh? There's a real nostalgic feeling to this place. Looks like you've been missing us. Dude! Did you come all the way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. It's an honor to finally meet the much-rumored Duke. Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir. No need to thank me. But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course. All right, then. This way. taken all the photos we need um miss charlotte do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the steam bird it would seem that miss lorveen doesn't want her face to appear beside that of mr jurier hmm? sir please don't say things like that <laughs> but it looks like dear mr jurier denies it might this interview be very important to you then no i i, I just this is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle, the Ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend. Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? Huh. Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that loss? You already know my answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Did you really have to use the word couple? Well then, two solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. Eh, we've seen this kind of thing before. Oh, seems like everyone's here. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? Ah, Sijuin. Uh, uh... Hey, Miss Charlotte. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure. Come on, Miss Sijuin. Over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. Huh? Oh, sure. Uh, do I have to smile? So, how have things been at the fortress? Same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, it got a tad too much attention, I think. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jurier? Miss Lurveen? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that, which is a pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. I see. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Anyway, regarding that harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine. And the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Oh, actually, what about you? Are things gonna change for you too? What change can there be? The fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Hey everyone, the photo shoot's done! Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. 
Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go. Till next time, everyone. There'll be a next time? Maybe. Who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time. Until then. All right. Last stop, the docks. Charlotte's photo shoots one day. Is that really necessary? Our line of work doesn't really require much photographing. It's precisely because we don't need the picture that they'll have value as keepsakes. We don't really look all that opposed to the idea, you know? Maybe I'm just happy that I managed to once again avoid the spotlight. I think this interview went well either way. Yes, you successfully kept prying eyes away by using Mr. Jurier and Miss Lurvine as shields. Very good. You should be happy for them. They have a bright future ahead of them. Here are the interview notes. They mentioned that the flying ship may have many uses in the future, and the journalist asked me what I thought of them. Seriously, how would I know anything about that? Flight is just flight. Whether people want to use a flying ship to broadcast good news or organize weddings is none of my beeswax. A wedding? Why are you looking at me like that? So the flying ship can be used for weddings? I didn't say that. That journalist mentioned it, and what does that have to do with us anyway? True. What does that have to do with us?
eyes peeled and your mind engaged, you'll find there's always a new story nearby just waiting to be discovered. Navia mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Traveler, Paimon. Ah, oh, and Miss Charlotte, too. Would you like a magic pocket? What sort of gadget is it? It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal. But if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Hmm, I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. You could just make a friend like Fremine here. Isn't that right, Fremine? <sighs> Is this what you meant by... I'll help you make some more friends. To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, please, write down my address. You sure are working hard to help Remini socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, and later Fremine himself. In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic to him, too. That said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette, could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. Hmm. So, how have things been, Traveler? Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. Ah, uh, that's all right. We were more than happy to help. So, what's she doing now? Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Well, after Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a diplomatic gift. Yes, I was quite surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring Narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. I would agree, but I've also heard that it seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? I suspect you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Ah, yes, speaking of which, 
I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripeed a while back. Uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? I'm not gonna think he'd have the time for that. But back to the topic. The Gnosis was given to the Knave, right? What about Child? They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. Shocked by such a simple switching of sides? <laughs> Father! Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. That is our duty as Harbingers, yes. Don't be too preoccupied with signs. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. A vision? <sighs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. And that's a wrap for me. It, huh? You... you're... Greetings, Miss Journalist. Uh, um... Hello. If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will. The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell. Farewell, Father. Oh, she has such an intimidating presence. I didn't even dare to take a picture. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. This will be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? Here, Traveler, Paimon, you take one too. To move things about? That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met, too. And what do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. All right, then. We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two.
Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the hydro element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the primordial sea, with constitutions similar to that of mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood, after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the Primordial Sea. Osalar must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone! Yeah, and in a manner of speaking, Osalar finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people too! It seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume. I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, Natlan can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlan have undergone long years of development and evolution. 
Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Nathlon is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Nave that I believe may be useful to you. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Nathlon. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Lady Farina, the people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me, before leaving the Opera House. I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired and needed to rest. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved out of the Opera House, not unlike how an ordinary person might. You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. What about you, then? What are your plans now that you've regained your full powers as the Hydro Dragon? After Fosalor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem, which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia, and it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's Divine Throne is now no more, and I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Paimon thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the Knave and as an apology to Child. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring Narwhal. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association, or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Guess Fosalor had Fontanians in mind the whole time. In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became... 
to keep real humans. Uh, hang on a second. Paimon suddenly got another question. Back when Montanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yeah! Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge! In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Um, hang on a sec. Paimon still got a question about the Gnosis. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. devouring narwhal isn't here so i'm no longer getting any interference i can finally catch the scent of your power what it's made of it is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in it's quite a novel blend i'm sure i've encountered something like this before what was it again i do not know what you speak of oh <sighs> Of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young, and I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense, which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger, then. That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, 
I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of the third descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paimon just thought they looked like chess pieces. How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui. If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. I had guessed that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element-compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the Third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh... Like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels... creepy. Comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck! <sighs> Once Child recovered, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way! I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. All right. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now. Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But she sacrificed herself in the end as a god, and she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will.
I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 